my witchy friends and Wiccan buddies. Welcome to Cat's Tea and Witchcraft. My name is Fauna and I am your host. Today's episode is going to go over the basics of candle magic, color associations, and I'm also going to throw in the associations with the days of the week. Just to give the episode a little more substance. So if you know anything about witches in witchcraft, you know that witches love candles. We use them for aesthetic purposes, we use them for spell, religious purposes, so we use them for a lot of things. So the use of candle magic is to use the energy created by the flames to produce a amplifier of your spells, prayers, or the desired results that you're focusing on. So when you're using these candles, you want to focus your intent into the candle. So that could be either carving things into it, painting things onto it, holding it and meditating, or just really focusing that intent on it while you're watching it burn, if that's something that you like to do. So ultimately the goal is gonna be that that candle absorbs your power and your goals, and as it's being burned, it releases that energy into the universe. Another thing that is very popular that people do to put that intent into their candles and their candle magic is they will either write things on a piece of paper or a bay leaf, and they'll burn it in the flame as they're doing their spell. In general, the use of fire or candles or a campfire of any sort is very strong when it comes to the usage of it in witchcraft. It's something that has been used for a very long time religiously, but also spiritually. So there's so many things that makes fire so important to the craft. The use of fire wasn't just something that people stumbled upon one day and were like, oh, this is kind of cool. Let's just use this for aesthetic purposes because that's not how things used to be. The use of fire is very important to humans for all sorts of reasons throughout human history and makes us feel a range of emotions towards it. Some people love it. Some people fear and hate it. Since fire is such a strong element. It represents passion and strength. It can create and destroy life. It's literally pure energy. It creates warmth and it burns. So there's a positive note and a very dangerous aspect to it. And when you think about it, humans used fire. They used the light of fire to help grow themselves and progress themselves as a species so if we didn't have fire and we didn't discover the uses of fire humans might not have evolved into what we are today so if it's just using a candle to light your room or guide your way or having a campfire or something in your home to keep you warm that's associated with fire even just cooking your food fire in that heat in that light is very important to us to survive and also for our craft purposes. And there's a variety of techniques that people can use and it all depends on your personal choices and how you like to do things. So you can write your own spells. There are books on candle magic. I have a couple I'll talk about at the end. So there's a variety of techniques. You can use single candles, you can use multiple candles, different sizes, ones that burn long term, ones that are faster to burn. So it literally all depends on what you're doing, how you want to do it, and the amount of time that it's going to take to do your particular magic. You don't always need to use candles. If you're outside and you have a fire, I would think that would be perfectly fine. But when it comes to the next thing that I'm going to talk about, which is color associations, this is where candles come in handy. Before I move on to the associations of different colors, I'm going to go over just one last thing in regards to using candles. It's common practice that when you are either done with your candle or in any sense that if you're not burning it all the way down that you snuff your candle during a ritual or spells. Some spells and rituals don't require you to burn everything all the way down. So if you're finishing something up, you don't want to keep it burning unattended. So what snuffing means is you're putting it out, but you're not blowing it out. 
you can buy snuffers they're usually like a little bell shape that come with like a long stick on the top and you put it over top of the flame and how it works is you're preventing oxygen from getting to the fire which is what puts it out because fire needs oxygen to burn and keep going what you don't need to do that for is if you're just lighting candles because you like the way it smells the reason why a lot of people don't like blowing out their candles is that they believe that blowing out the candles blows away your intentions but on the opposite side of that a lot of people do something else that involves making wishes or working some sort of magic and blowing out candles and that happens to be blowing out birthday candles on a cake Generally, when you have a birthday or you're blowing out some sort of candles, I guess for a big event, usually it's on your birthday. I don't know if anyone blows out candles for other special events. But the idea is you make a wish, you don't tell anyone your wish, and then you blow the candles out. And if you tell people your wish, that you won't have your wish come true. So if you've never thought about it that way before, essentially what you're doing when you're blowing out a birthday cake is magic and before I move away from the idea of the cake and I think it's really cool and I didn't think about this connection until a little more recently when you blow out those birthday candles they tell you not to tell anyone because if you tell someone your wish isn't going to come true that sounds very similar to one of the concepts that is in the witch's pyramid which is to be silent and one of the things that I encourage people of because I follow the witch's pyramid is when you do magic until your spell has been completed and you received results unless it's the coven or someone you work closely with for your magic as like a mentor or a friend keep your wish or your spell private because that prevents any sort of manipulation from outside sources to prevent that wish or spell from coming true or if you talk about it a little too much you might start to question yourself which can decrease the potency of your magic don't want to give yourself any opportunities for self-doubt but if you don't feel the need to have to snuff your candles out for any reason just just go ahead and blow it out just know what you believe and stick to it and you can always change your mind if something comes up that makes you feel differently so moving on to the next part which is color associations color associations are used as symbols or colors as literally colors that represent a feeling that you want to associate with your spell along with dressing your candles with herbs or oils or carving sigils and things into it of that sort colors can be very very strong representations of your goals one thing to keep in mind when you're doing magic that involves color associations is that colors can vary meaning from person to person or culture to culture because different cultures have different representations of what colors mean to them red can mean one thing to one person or it can mean something completely different to another and besides emotions colors can be associated with seasons actions of some sort some people have a feeling of action of either loudness or strength or like they feel really energized and I guess those are technically emotions but I feel like actions you can almost feel an action is associated with a color depending on its potency maybe um, you can get a spiritual energy out of it especially the colors that are associated with chakras and certain colors are also associated with different jobs out there specifically police officers a lot of them tend to wear blue um, sometimes black but when you think of like cartoons and everything they're usually wearing blue or with witches people a lot of the time associate the color black with witches if it's clothes or their hair or just everything around them that color is just associated visually with witches and the use of color is obviously very important to humankind people use it to put in artwork to decorate their homes to style their outfits so color is everywhere and if color is not for you and you just wear mostly one color that's very fair but there is so much that goes into the use of color throughout the entire planet 
for a multitude of reasons and witchcraft happens to be able to utilize it as well. The next thing I'm going to go over is just a list of some basic colors and what people tend to use these for. A lot of these colors are going to be, I guess, more Western culture and Western representations for them. And so if you have your own personal feeling towards a certain color, go with that because all of these might not connect with you in what the meanings are to the color. And your intent into the use of color is definitely one of those things that you can do based on how you feel. It's not like you can change the uses of what crystals are for because those have kind of been tested out a little bit. And this list probably has some very good examples that are a little more universal. But since colors are more of an association between personal experience and cultural experience, this is where you can have a little bit more freedom though. The first color that I have on my list is red. Red represents courage, health, sexual love, strength, vigor, protection, and passion. Pink is for honor, love, morality, and friendships. Orange is adaptability, attraction, encouragement, stimulation, and energy. Yellow or gold is also for attraction, charm, confidence, persuasion, protection, intellect, study, and divination. White is purity, sincerity, protection, and peace as well. The cool thing about white is if you are missing another color, because white is literally the absence of color, you can put a lot of intent into your white candle if you really needed a red one but don't have one. Focus on the associations with red into the white candle because literally it doesn't have a color to it it's blank the next one is like a greenish yellow which can be anger cowardice discord jealousy or sickness for regular green so i'd say more like a plant green is fertility finance money healing luck growth and employment brown is hesitation neutrality uncertainty or i guess it one of the books that I was referencing said about healing animals, I guess because it's a very earthy color. Uh, light blue is health, patience, tranquility, understanding, healing, and happiness. It tends to be a very happy color. Dark blue is changeability, depression, which I personally don't agree with, but it was in the list. Impulsiveness, sincerity, or psych psychism. But see, when I said depression and impulsiveness, I personally would not use the color blue for those, but for you, the idea of being blue and the sadness with it could be associated depending on your personal experiences or your personal feelings towards it. The next one is violet, which is healing, peace, and spirituality. Purple is ambition, business progress, power, tension, healing, severe disease, spiritualism, and meditation. Following that is silver or gray, which can be cancellation, neutrality, stalemate, brilliance, or reflection. And the last one is the color black, which can be used for the uses of confusion, discord, negativity, loss, neutrality, or indecision. Another thing that people tend to use it, and it isn't always negative, and a lot of people associate the color black for a candle for some reason, besides witches, as a very negative thing. And for me, that bothers me because as someone who's an artist, the color black is, is, is great. Like, it's very deep, it's very dark, but it's actually a collection of all colors in one. And I don't see that as a bad thing. I would actually prefer to use a black candle over a white candle, but because the color white is the absence of color, it would be easier to kind of like re-identify that white essence into a different color than the color black would be because it literally has all the colors and you might kind of get a little bit of all the colors versus just putting your intent of one color. I don't know. Hopefully that makes sense. That's just something that came to my mind. The next set of associations I have that come to colors is colors that are associated with astrology. For Aquarius is blue and green. Pisces, white and green, Aries, white and pink, 
Taurus is red and yellow, Gemini, red and blue, Cancer, green and brown, Leo, red and green, Virgo is gold and black, Libra, black and blue, Scorpio, brown and black, Sagittarius, gold and red, Capricorn, red and brown. And the last bit I have is colors associated with days of the week. I wanted to keep this in with the colors and not the overall associations that also deal with the days of the week. So for Monday is white, Tuesday is red, Wednesday purple, Thursday blue, Friday green, Saturday black, and Sunday yellow. So just like colors, the days of the week have their own associations. I'm not sure how we came to these associations with days of the week, but I guess it's just based on a lot of trial and error when doing spells and what things might have worked best for people. So the same could kind of go for the association of herbs and other magical properties. People tried to test things out and they figured out what might work better. And that's just my assumption. So I'm going to go down the days of the week Monday through Sunday and I'm just going to list off like I did for the colors. Again these days of the week and associations might vary from culture to culture. So for Monday it's ancestors, childbearing, dreams, healing, instinct, memory, merchandise, purity, theft, and virginity. Tuesday is enemies, initiation, loyalty, prison, protection, war, and wealth. Wednesday is business, communication, debt, fear, loss, and travel. Thursday is clothing, desires, harvests, honor, marriage, oaths, riches, and treaties. For Friday is beauty, family life, friendship, fruitfulness, growth, harmony, love, nature, pleasures, sexuality, strangers, and waters. Saturday is building, doctrine, freedom, gifts, life, protection, real estate, sewing, and tenacity. And Sunday is agriculture, beauty, creativity, fortune, hope, money, self-expression, and victory. Reading these off kind of gave me a feeling this <laughs> list kind of like gives off how people feel just throughout their week and things that they might be doing throughout their week. I don't know. I just got a feeling like Saturday was definitely a lot more fun than a Tuesday because I definitely personally have a lot more fun on Saturdays than I do on a Tuesday at work. So the last things that I'm going to go over are the kind of the moons or the planets that are association with the days of the week. For Monday, it's just moon, so I'm associating that's Earth's moon. For Tuesday, Mars. Wednesday, Mercury. Thursday, Jupiter. Friday, Venus. Saturday is Saturn. That makes sense because it sounds very familiar. And Sunday is the sun, which also sounds very similar. So... I kind of went over a lot of associations for a variety of colors and days of the week. So if things don't work for you and you don't feel like they represent those things for you, don't worry about it. But if you want to try to maybe test it out and see if it's for you, it might give you some interesting results depending on your personal beliefs. So if you have your own associations with colors and it feels stronger to you, focus on that. Focus on the colors that will help you visualize the results that you want to get with your spell. So if a certain color helps you get into a certain emotional state that's better, focus on that, whatever works. And the same thing goes for the day of the week. Some people really enjoy Mondays, Tuesdays, through Wednesdays, Thursdays, and then other people don't feel like they can do things until Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So same thing goes for candles. So if you're doing magic and you don't have certain colors, like I said, don't worry about it. Maybe just focus on a white candle. So I would say have a lot more white candles if you can get access and use candles. And if you're doing a spell and you can't do one on a certain day of the week, don't worry about it. I personally do not work with the days of the week. I focus more on the colors and the phases of the moon, which I am hoping to go over on the next episode. So if you're interested in learning more about candle magic or the associations that work really good with it, um, a lot of introductory books on witchcraft or Wicca have 
at least an introduction into it. But I have two relatively smallish books, but they tend to have a range of examples of things that we could do. Um, I have one book that's called Practical Candle Burning Rituals, and it's by Raymond Bucklin. The difference with this book that I've seen in a lot of other kind of witchy books is this book for every spell. There's a Christian version of it, and then there's a non-Christian version of it, so a, a witchy version. So a Christian and a witchy version, which I find actually very intriguing. And another one that I have is just called Candle Magic, and it is by Lady Passion. I haven't had the chance to use this one as much of a, as I have had the Raymond Bucklin one. So if you don't want a book that's like enormously large, if you have to like keep the size of your materials low or you're still in a broom closet and you need to hide things, these two books might be interesting to look at because they're almost like the size of a small notebook or like an agenda. So yeah, um, that's all I have for you today. So if you guys have any additional questions on any of these topics, feel free to send me a message on social media. You can find me on Instagram at Cats Tea and Witchcraft, on Twitter at Cats Tea and Witch. You can send me an email at Cats Tea and Witchcraft Podcast at gmail.com. Also, if you guys listen to this podcast on Apple, you can go ahead and leave a review. I would appreciate it. Um, and in general, I appreciate every single one of you guys. If you've gotten all the way to the end of this episode, thank you so much. Um, but I will talk to you guys next week. Have a good one. Blessed be.